Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to set up intersection observation in our, in our website homepage and uh, we're going to do a few more chains, okay? So it's all going to be pretty much clear to you. I I will hope that. So, yeah. Let me first of all Okay, one second. Here's a change. I was just doing first first of all testing through things and it all went right and now I'm here. So, you can see you know, first of all we're doing a server side rendering thing. So, what is happening with the server side rendering? We're just initially getting some values, you know, some video values from the server, and this is what we're getting. Okay, so yarn dev. Okay, let us start of a server first of all. Let me just say load one. Let's go back. So this is all of the videos that are available in our, in our database. I just copied the documents basically. I just copied it to twenty, and you already know about the you know the preview thing. That we can play previews of the video like that, you know, by hovering over the video. So yeah, and these previews are auto-generated, and so is the thumbnail for now. And the time is pretty uh, is also working pretty fine. And what do we want to do? Like let's say let's suppose we have 1,000 videos in our database. Do we want to load all the 1,000 videos in here? No, we don't want to load them. We want to only load that much amount of videos that are visible to the users. So I did few things, you know, few testings, and basically this design. This design can only hold up to eight videos per screen. Doesn't really matter, but it 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 can be different for mobile screens. So for the mobile screen, maybe you can write a different logic, maybe. But I would I'm just saying for the PC screen, it it is not going to hold more than four, uh, uh more than four uh, you know videos in a uh, in the width. So basically, we can just say we get in total eight videos. But let's suppose we will be giving you know rendering 12 videos as an advance from the server itself only it will render only 12 videos not more than 12 videos and if the user wants more video if he keeps scrolling down then we want to load uh, four more videos four more videos four 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 accordingly he can go down 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 and so on and so forth so basically the concept is pretty neat I'll try to explain you every single thing we are going to use react intersection of Zover. I will tell you that about in a minute I was just doing through testing first of all to be honest Took me a while. So what are we going to do here? So we we just first of all saying we need 12 videos as in start, like to get the user started. We want to to provide the user 12 videos as an advance. Like he's once his uh, page opens up, his home page, he should have at least 12 videos rendered in the screen. Doesn't matter if four videos are hidden below, but we want to show him 12 videos at least. We want to render 12 videos on his side. So for that, let's add an extra, uh, you know, uh query in here we'll call it as uh, as something like uh, render first is going to be called the true and we, I'm just calling it something random okay it doesn't really matter I can just say it first render is going to be called the true something like that and in the video uh, not in ex exactly in the video I'm just saying unique is uh, not true because I was doing free copy pasting so that's why Let's go to our uh, uh, get video section. In here, we, we were just saying, yeah, we saw the video and get the uh, time in our uh, you know five hour ago, one minute ago, one second ago, something like that. But now we have to do a few more things. We're here getting the query as under the request and, and, and as underscore. We'll say constant request is going to be underscore dot query. It's just being like a request dot query. I'm just doing it a little bit, you know, more smaller. So we need two things now. We need the video. We need. I need the page number and the page quantity. So what is the page number, page quantity going to do? Basically, Mongoose or MongoDB or even MySQL has this functionality called as skip or limit. So we're gonna have a few functionalities like. Let me just say first of all. Let's say. Okay, I'm just typing a lot. Uh, let's say constant page uh, page quantity is going to be zero for now, and constant page number is going to be zero. Okay, we're just supposing what happened here. List cannot be empty. Okay, something like that. And now, what do we want from the video? We don't want to get all of the videos. We can here put two things. We can here put first of all skip skip uh, method will you know skip the amount of videos that you want it to skip. Let's say we want to skip uh, a page number amount of videos. Page number will basically decide how many videos we want to skip. 
that's your 12 videos are already rendered on the user screen so we'll skip 12 videos and now in the quantity we want to show how many more videos four videos of course so we're gonna say dot limit uh, then page QTY page QTY is just going to be four uh, by default or if the user is right you know uh, making the first render thing we will have the, this thing as a uh, the page quantity as uh, probably like maybe 12 yeah we'll have it as 12 so that's the thing so what is happening currently we're just saying yeah skip first 12 videos and uh, show more for videos after 12 which means uh, 13 14 15 16 it will just show you only six is four more videos which means from 12 to uh, 16 it will show you it will just give you back all these videos and then so on and so forth we're gonna do much more things and um, but till now we're just having a page quantity is going to be this thing and we will be giving the we will not be giving the page quantity from the one we actually call the using the XCS request or fetch requests in the when we actually you know, scroll down stuff like that. But what we want to do instead here, okay, we're gonna go back in the page quantity. Here we'll say if request dot uh, first render is true, then I wanna sh have this page quantity as twelve. Otherwise, I want page quantity to be four. Okay. Because four is what we want initially. So we're just saying if this is first render, we want our uh, page uh, quantity to be 12 because we want from zero to 12 videos. But if it's not, then the case is just like you know we're calling this uh, API and we want four videos. And in page number, basically page number is going to say if this is request dot first render, then I want to show zero. Otherwise, okay, now here is going to be a little bit confusion part. Otherwise, if uh, request dot page number is defined, okay, we're just saying yeah, request the page number is defined. Then what I want to do, I want to say like that. If request the page number is defined, like the user gave us request uh, request of page number, uh, then we will say first of all, uh, do, 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 if it's defined. Because the page number is defined, then what do we want to say? We want to uh, keep the page number as request dot page number. Otherwise, I will keep it as page number is by default going to be zero, maybe. Yeah, probably zero. So one second, let me just think about this thing. We're just saying if because the first runner was there, then I want to show zero. If it wasn't. And then I want to have another condition. If actually request the page num was given by the user, then I want to show request the page num. Otherwise, I want to show nothing. I want to show basically zero, which means it's it's just the first render, right? Oh, it's not actually first render. Then I want to show what if the page num was not given. Let's say null. Or right, here we're gonna have another condition. We don't want the request of page number to be less than zero, right? Or more than our video total quantity. So yeah. That's the first of all constant uh, total videos are going to be equal to oh wait. Videos dot find dot count. So this basic dot find dot count function is going to return us how many total videos we have in the server. So what's going to happen? We don't want our, you know, this thing, our request of page num uh, multiplied by. Okay, we don't want our request of page num multiplied by our thing, you know, multiplied by our page quantity to be greater than the total quantities we have. So why am I multiplying this? Let me just basically get it clear. We're saying page number can be zero. So if we do, let me just show you. If we do zero multiplied by uh, basically for now we're gonna have four, it's gonna give us back maybe four. Yeah, so we'll have some kind of initial values also. So constant A is going to be if request if request dot first render was there, then I wanna get I wanna keep it as oh no that. First render. If this, if this was on the first, 
this was the first one and I want to keep it as 0 if it wasn't I want to keep it as 2 so what is happening basically a is, very, a is a variable uh, anyway like anytime we're gonna make a call to the server what is going to happen we will have we will just keep adding 12 already to the videos because we know we have already rendered 12 videos so we wanna add 12 all every single time we we'll make a request to the server in the total videos so let's say now uh, of a page number that we're getting from the uh, user side is 0 so you get the page number 0 the first page initially and we will multiply it with our page quantity which is going to be 4 it's, which it will give us basically it will become 4 and then we add a 12 to it it will basically become 16 you see now we have 4 extra videos our total videos will be become 16 so this will go on 4th let's see if we have 1 here now it's going to become what it's going to become 4 4 plus 2 okay not exactly so first if you make a request with 0 we will not actually actually be making a request with 0 multiplied by 4 page number cannot be 0 so that's a thing if page number is 0 then what I'm gonna show what actually is going to happen we are just going to send back the videos that we already own or some or we're just going to send back nothing I'll make the condition here also so we're saying if we get 2 here it's going to be 8 plus 12 that gives us kind of like 18 not actually 18 that will give us 20 if it's 3 then it's, it goes so on and so forth like that, like that. perfect what I want to exactly have here if request of page number is defined I want to show something and I want to make sure request of page the num if it's equal to 0 if it's less than or equal to 0 then I want to show 0 otherwise I want to keep moving ahead okay you're just saying yeah uh, not actually it's exactly 0 so return null then if this is the case because I don't want to be proceeding further if page number is 0 because that doesn't make sense right that's complete alter this complete crap uh, other than saying uh, return null we could have said response or json something like that but that's alright if it's 0 or smaller uh, equal smaller or equal than 0 then I want to show null otherwise I want to keep proceeding further I would say if a request the page num is request the page num multiplied by page qt by our condition right now plus a I'm gonna keep them in bracket if it's greater than total videos if they are greater than total videos greater than or equal to total videos then what, what, what I want to do I'm gonna basically return null otherwise I wanna keep moving add okay well, like that's a lot of conditions though not sure what's gonna happen comes with log page number let's give it a try in the under client videos page number is equal to 1 we get null page number is equal to 2 we get null okay that's fine because I made it a little bit more complicated than it has to be yeah I will be honest with you I did make it a lot more complicated so what are we going to do instead we're going to say uh, by default it's going to be 0 as by first render I'm going to say if request dot oh one second I guess I didn't call the page no I called it wrong Null. How about one? We get one. Okay. Okay, one as uh, I don't know. I made a lot more complicated things to be honest. Just getting back the page number, which is just one that I expected to be. And I don't want to see one, right? Okay, let's let's go let's go back a little bit. You say if request a page number is defined, actually if it's defined uh and request dot page num is Smaller than
or is smaller than alt is greater than or equal to is greater than zero basically. If it is this thing, then I want to move ahead. What I want to do now, I'm going to say if because the page now multiplied by our page quantity, adding our a to it. Let's see initial value to make it more clear. If these all things are greater or equal to total videos, I want to say return with the response JSON state of zero. If that's not the case, I want to say page number is going to be equal to our request request dot page num multiplied by our page quantity, adding uh, initial value inside it. And that's going to be our page num. Page num is going to be equal to initial value. Assign it to a constant value. Yeah, that's right. Not bad. Send. We get 16 back. That's what we want because we have one here. If I say something like zero, it's just going to send back zero. It's just basically going to send us a you know, uh, response of uh, something like, okay, it didn't work out right. But I guess it didn't told us something like that. Okay, request response is greater than zero. Then only we want to move ahead, right? Else if request dot first render is not defined, that means I should be returning response dot JSON status zero. So what is what are happening? What is happening here? We're just saying. Maybe somebody give the page num lower than zero, and we still it's not the first render. We know that. What I want to do in this case, send back the status zero. Boom, there we go. It just died. Otherwise, we're gonna just keep moving ahead, right? Now here the page quantity is going to be four, and the, this one skip is going to be like skip first few videos and then stuff like that. Okay. Page num can be actually zero. I mean to say, yeah, it can be zero. Equal to zero. It cannot be less than zero though, because if it's equal to zero, we get twelve here. So basically, we're just saying we start from twelve till sixteen. Okay, I'm, I will show you that right now. We are having a page quantity also. We're getting here one, two, three, four data. You can see we got four data, which means till sixteen we got four data. Now let's make a call at 1, which means uh, 16, we get till 16 to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now if I say it as 2, it's going to give me state as 0 because we know 20 is the end. And there are no more videos other than you know, uh, more than 20. So yeah, that's the end and it's just going to show us nothing back. Well, I guess we are pretty much set it up in here. In the back end section. Yeah, I guess so. If anything else needed to be done, we will do it afterwards. But I think for now, this much of a little bit setup is pretty fine. And we can do another thing also uh, as an additional thing. If there is no request dot first render, and there is no request dot page num, I'm gonna say return with the response on JSON status zero as an additional uh, you know uh, additional check it's going to be the first one now let's go back here and here we just have to say okay let's close it you need to import a, a you need to add a, or you can say npm import react in, uh, intersection observer basically that simple thing all you have to do here you can see I've already imported this thing here uh, the react intersection observer okay and after you know importing this React intersection observer, it's a uh, use in view uh, React hook. What we have to do first of all, we need to, uh, so how does uh, actually the intersection observer works? We will have some uh, you know item in the uh, uh, you know actually some item in the end. It can basically be your rendered content, the last you know the last element item of your rendered content, or basically we can just define 
some uh, some dupe at the very end of your con uh, at the end at the very at the very end of your con uh, videos, which will will not be visible till the point we scroll down all the way. Okay, when we are at the end of our page, it will be visible. Something like that. We'll say uh, loading. Something like that. It's not going to be visible probably. Okay. You can say a class list. Background is going to be black. Text is going to be white, and uh, text is going to be going to be centered. Let's say yarn dev. I do a refresh here. Okay, error. Connection refused. Cannot access request before installation. Uh, my bad. Call it something like that. I do a refresh now, and if I go all the way down, here you can see here we have the list loading thing. We'll hide it afterwards, but for now, just as a for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just showing it as this is a loading thing, okay? So what do we exactly want to do? Either you can show it, you can have some loading bar here, so user will actually get to know, okay, something is being something is being loaded. So that's uh, the, that's a thing, but I'm just showing you, you know, once this thing get visible, we will just start to load more content. It user doesn't have to see it because we can add more things in here, like uh, root margin stuff like that. But I'm just showing as an example. For now, we're just getting all, not actually all of the videos, which are only getting 12 videos right, right now. You can notice that uh, 4, 4, 8, 8, 4, 12. We're only getting 12 videos, even we have 20 videos because we have the first random system only here, right? First random is called the true. That's great. Now, what we have to do, we have to pass it a uh, ref. So we need to uh, pass it a ref. I'm just explaining in a minute. So ref is just like a connection. Uh, in uh, normal JavaScript, you use uh, document or selector, use document selector stuff like that. But in React, we use use refs. Uh, so use use refs are basically the same as document or selector stuff uh, stuff like that. Query selector. So just in, in what we do in React. Here we can say ref is going to be. We'll just define some ref upside. We'll say constant we don't actually have to say constant because that's the purpose of using use in view here we need to say constant ref it gives us ref okay one minute let's go directly to its documentation react intersection observer we'll go to the end game. here it gives us this thing ref in view entry so we'll just say get ref in given entry. So basically, this ref is going to be it is going to be a ref that is they're going to provide us, and we have to just define it as something. So we'll just here say page and it's going to get a, with a connect with the ref with the name of page and. So this they just you know this using view React, which is providing us the ref by itself. I can rename it to page and. So basically, I can connect. Uh, with my thing, and I, I will add the options. I would say threshold is going to be by default. This threshold is just one by default, and then we have the root margin. Root margin, which is basically yeah, root margin, basically defines like within how much of the you know how much of uh, height you want that thing to be. You want your action to be happening. You want your in view to be become true, okay? In view just says, yeah, how close you are. You know, actually, in view just says, yeah, uh, that uh, our last div is visible to our screen. If you increase your root margin, uh, if you're even uh, you know 100 pixels away from that thing, it will just become true. So that's the advantage of using use uh, root margin. I'll just uh, you know commit it out for now, and I will just commit up threshold uh, one uh, also for now because threshold one is as a, is a default thing. And threshold one means basically the that our div last div component should be you know completely visible to us and hundred percent. If I, I will just say like only if it's only fifty percent visible, then you can perform the task. If it's only zero point one means ten percent visible, zero point five means fifty percent visible. One just means it, it should be hundred percent visible for our task to be executed. So let's say for now we don't have we don't want to do anything. And in view is is just basically going to be. You know, it's going to contain something like, yeah, this thing is actually in view right now. Okay, 
something like that. So we're just having in view for now, and uh, I can keep it in view right there. Or I can rename it to like is visible. I think in view is also pretty fine. Is visible. Now we need a uh, use effect hooks. We need to say use effect hook, and we need to call it every time is visible gets updated. So is visible get will get updated only when uh when when this div is going to be visible in our screen and when it's not going to be visible. So it will just become true or false, true or false. It is, is it visible in our screen? True. If it's not visible in our screen, false. So uh, at that moment, we're just going to call, keep calling the use effect hook again and again and again and again. So something like that. Okay, one minute. Okay, so now what we're going to do basically, we just say we will make another constant, uh, one other, another variable, which will be having use state hook. So we'll just say constant uh, has more. Set uh, has more. It's going to be use state. By default, it's going to be true. So basically, this has more uh, variable is just going to have something like you know, uh, there is still more data to come. Okay, let's suppose we are having uh, oh, 100 videos in total in our database, and users creeping, you know, users trying to scroll down, down, and down, down. And at the very end moment, once he loaded the handwritten video, we will setting we'll send back the status zero. Okay, we'll send the status zero, which will initially uh, set uh, this has more to false. It will just say, okay, there is no more video. You cannot load any more video. So we just stop right there. We'll just say initially, first of all, in the use effect hook, we want say if uh, has more is true, then I want to continue. I will say if has one is not true, then I want to just return. I want to do nothing. Okay. So if uh, there are no more videos to load, then I want to go back and I don't want to move, you know, to do something, you know, to keep moving ahead uh, more and more. Uh, otherwise, I want to do what? I want to have another variable here, another use state, which is just going to be page num and uh, set page number use state. Which by default is going to be zero. So I'm gonna say initially there's going to be there's going to be a page number with the value of zero. As we know by default, we're gonna send the first of all that request, and afterwards we will be increasing one by one by one till it reaches the uh, last thing, which is has more. Which until we'll just set the has more to false. Okay. I know there's uh, more things that we have to set up in the backend, and I will do that later on. But for now, we'll just say. Constant fetch videos will make a function. It's going to take an E element. And I don't think we need actually the AE here. We're going to say let's get a function. And what is this function going to do? Is it's going to call for our API? We'll say constant get the data from Axios. Await uh, axios dot get will make a request to slash authentication slash get videos uh, comma page num is going to be our page num what we do with the variable we defined already we'll just say if data dot status is did came back as zero then I want to return with changing our set has more to false, we'll say yeah, there is no more videos to load because the state is zero. That means we are at the very end point, or something else happened. We'll just say same thing in the both conditions. And if that is not the case, I want to say we just for now we're just running the videos directly from the data we get here. But now we're going to make it a change, make it a little bit of change in here. Okay, we'll just say constant videos set uh, videos is going to be use state by default this one is going to be the value of data uh, data yeah it's going to be data by default what about the data whatever data we get back I'll just give it the value of the data in there okay here we need to make it a synchronous function so what we're just setting yeah yeah data we should have all of the Things that you have in the data in the in this videos 
value now. So it is going to act same as the data did before. But now what we can do here, once we get the new data, we'll just say set videos. It should give us the previous uh, data that it already had. And then we're going to return all the previous video, uh, data in an array and including our new data dot data. So basically this data dot data is just like, you know, we get two things back. We get the data dot status and the data dot data. So when I get the data dot data and I want to, you know, spread out all the values we get. We get uh, maybe like four array, uh, four uh, uh, what do we say? Four arrays back, and I want to just spread them out. I want to just, uh, just get the values of the arrays right here, and I want to get the values of all the old arrays that we had before, and I want to just put all of them inside this array. Feels good, good. And after this thing is done, I want to increase one to my page num. Once I set page num, it's going to get the previous value, and it's going to return previous plus one. So this is the initial code. I want to, and if it has more, I want to say all for the fetch videos function, and boom, your work is done. Let's give it a try. Uh, nice, feels good to me. I'm gonna do a refresh. We have here how many videos? We have here a few videos. Let's go to network tab to actually take a look what is what is happening. If I keep going down, you can see they called for two things, two APIs, which is num is one, where num was one, and num was two. And once both of them was perfectly loaded, we get to see here what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty videos. All of our videos are loaded in here, and they they, they will load loaded one by one according to open needs. Okay. I do a refresh. I go down a little bit. It will just call one API at a time, according to you know we get into the screen. Okay, just calling both of them. Okay, one second, I need to see this one. Why is it calling both of them at a time? Uh, oh yeah, well it's calling both of them because there's not much of a difference between you know the API number one and API number two. Okay, because we're just rendering only four items, so this item is only also visible. So we're just saying yeah, this thing is right there, so we should be calling that thing also. Okay, I'll say maybe. When it's completely visible, I want to then do things. If I say root margin is going to be 100 pixels, then it's going to load 100 pixels, you know, earlier than it should have. I'll go a little bit down. It will load already. Okay, just basically calling both of them. I guess it was not meant to be 100 pixels. It was just meant to be like 100, maybe 100 person, I guess. Yeah, 100 person. So it just calls both of them things and it gets data back, whatever it wants to get. Uh, page number two is just giving it uh, the status zero because we're just saying, yeah, there is no more data you can get. So keep the way we have, you know, be happy with the way we we are already are. And yeah, we get all the data. And keep the root margin. I guess root margin is pretty fine already. I don't need any root margins anyway. Maybe I can have root margin of fifty percent, and now I can basically just say hide this thing. It's going to be nothing. I can just say it is. It's going to be. Hidden. Exactly. Okay, now if we go to down. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it, 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 we should not make it hidden though. We shouldn't make it hidden. If it's hidden, then 
we never get to detect it. Exactly. We should make it hidden, we'll just keep it there for that way. We can just give it anything. Like maybe make it span so it doesn't have you know inline display properties, stuff like that. And the videos will get still loaded perfectly fine. I go down, you can see both the APIs were called. And they were called pretty fast though. Okay, well that was it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. And I will see you in the next one. Have a nice day. One additional thing to mention guys, we'll be only calling fetch videos only if the you know element is actually visible. We don't want to call the fetch you know fetch videos function if the element is not visible. So basically this use effect will run even if the element got visible, it got uh, you know unvisible. So we'll just keep calling it in that way. But we only want to show, you know, we only want to run fetch videos once it, it gets visible. And in that way, things will get much more better. I'll just show you in a minute. You can see if I do a refresh. Now you just keep looking at you look at the calls. API calls. I go a little bit down. You can see first call was made page number is equal to zero. Because we have the width, we have the root margin of 50%, at the height of 50%, if we, if we just keep calling the APIs. I go a little bit more down. It will call page number is equal to one, which means it loaded a few more videos. We loaded four more videos. I go down. It will call page number is equal to, which means it loaded four more videos. And it will keep adding them again and again and again and again. Unless until every single thing is not perfectly done, unless until all the videos are not listed here. So basically, the user will never know what's happening with him. And that's pretty cool. And if I do a refresh now, I go down faster, I will never notice it. Okay? You can see, you can see, I, I'm seeing all the videos, all the 20 videos. But in the back end, they are making calls. I'm getting to see all the 20 videos, but in back end we already know it's not. It shouldn't give us 20 videos normally. Okay. Now you can see it's all the videos are being initialized fast. I go down. I can see four, eight, uh, twelve, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We only get to see sixteen videos though. Okay, wait a minute. Let's do a refresh. Let's see. Oh, basically, I know the issue. The root margin 50% is not a good thing. It's just a crap thing. You can see 100 pixels problem. So 100 pixels should not be creating a problem for us. Okay? Yeah, 100 pixels is pretty much working fine. So we're just saying, yeah, lower the content handle pixel further. You can just notice the you know scroll bar. I go a little bit down, it just got short and smaller. I go a little bit more down, it became more short, small. You can see a four four eight, uh, four four eight, which means uh, we got total 16, 16, 4 became 20. And in the back end, you can see we're making three API calls, one zero, one and two. And that's it for this video. This is the infinite infinite scroll video, or you can see intersection blocks video. We can say saving the space video. And uh, the last thing we had to do is basically if we're saying, yeah, this is not the case, the page number stuff like this is not the case. But what if we don't have exactly 20 videos? Like we don't have exactly even videos. We have 21 videos. What's going to happen in that case? Well, maybe we can go a little bit more practical in this case. So, yeah, call for MongoDB Compass. Exactly, get to know what's going to happen in that case. Go to videos, let's do a copy, insert. Done, we have 21 videos now. What's going to happen? I don't know, we have to see. Okay? Well, that's what is going to happen. <laughs> it is going to give us the 20 best video without any issues. And if I do a refresh, you just notice the scroll bar. We're having this big scroll bar, which means only 12 videos are loaded initially. I go a little bit more down, scroll bar decreases. You'll you notice this thing. I go more down, scroll bar more decreases. You can see now over all the videos are loaded, loaded here basically. Well, that is that was it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. Bye bye.